Yes. Councilmember Whitlow? Yes. And Mayor Kenny? Yes. yes. Thank you. Unfinished business, we have none. New business. Consideration of contract award, Swidorsky Brothers Municipal Marina Dredging. The city has received funding from the state of Michigan to dredge 300 cubic yards of material from the city marina slips. This will allow for sufficient depth at our biggest docks to handle the large, deep draft boats. All funding is coming from the state of Michigan and Swidorsky Brothers is the low bidder. Work will be completed in the spring of 2014. The city attorney has reviewed and approved the contract. Is there a motion to approve the contract? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. I have a motion by Councilmember Harmful, support by Councilmember Goodspeed, to award the contract in the amount of 48500 to Swidorsky Brothers to judge approximately 300 cubic yards. Is there any discussion? This is not city funds, correct? That is correct. These funds are coming from the state of Michigan. Uh, they were the emergency dredge funds that the state of Michigan has been working on for the past six to eight months. Mm -hmm. um, and these funds will be coming from the state to dredge those locations. And, and there's no match, addition. is that correct? That is correct. And this is in addition to the river dr channel dredging we've, been, we've had? Totally separate from the river dredging. The river dredging is done completely by the United States Army Corps of Engineers okay. that keeps the, um, the harbor at the right draft draft for freighter traffic and commercial industrial traffic coming through. This is dredging funds which are available from the state of Michigan to allow marinas and launches and things to continue to operate in what we thought was going to be a very low water cycle of 2013. We actually did much better in our water cycle of mm -hmm. 2013, we thought, but that's where these funds were allocated from. Okay. Now how far does this go past the, the ramp as it comes in, goes into the water? This is going to do dredging at the marina operation. Oh, no, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Yep, this will do the um, last three slips to the... Three to five, the big one. Three to five of the okay. last slips to the west. Right. Uh, where, the, where the Coast Guard boat mm -hmm. members, those are the ones we like to get dredged. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, good question. Any other questions? Can you please take the roll? Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Councilmember Whitlip? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zaring? Yes. And Councilmember Harkel? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. 
Consideration of the purchase and installation of 100 kilowatt generator for City Hall. Grant funds in the amount of $20,718 have been awarded to the City from Region 7 Emergency Management toward a 45 kW gas generator for police operations. A capital improvement amount of $15,000 has been budgeted to upgrade the project to a 100 kW gas generator to run all of City Hall. The generator will be purchased from Grammy Electric at a cost of $27,810. The State of Michigan is requesting that Grammy Electric receive this bid. The electrical work will be performed by our electrician of record, top line, for $5,600, and the gas work by custom sheet metal, our heating contractor of record, for $2,100. Total project cost to upgrade to the 100 kW is $35,718. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion the council take action to support and approve the purchase and installation of 100 kilowatt natural gas generator for City Hall at a project cost of $35,718. I'll second that. I have a motion by Council Member Hornquist, support by Council Member Goodspeed to approve the purchase and installation. Is there any discussion? Yes. Are there, are there any bids out or is this just a standard buy? Are we... Are there three bids on these, on this generator? This is, this is a complicated deal. The state of Michigan required two years ago when we put the grant request in for the kilowatt generator for the police department, required me to provide them with three quotes for generators of 45 kilowatts. Okay. As part of my grant application. I submitted those to Region 7, and Region 7 sent back notice that we were awarding the 20,000 and said you will buy this generator from this contractor. So it wasn't rebid. Okay. We collected quotes as an estimate for the grant, and the state of Michigan accepted those quotes and said, you'll spend our money with this contractor and this amount of money to this contractor. So we didn't have any say in it? Well, we had the original three we sent them. Right. So based on the three we sent them, they said this is the best price and this is the best we want to use. Okay. It's in the packet email from Region 7, Ken Falk has said, we had to buy it from them. So then when you upgrade, it's not like Lego where I can buy a 55 from somebody and put them together. You've got to kind of keep it at just one unit, it's one motor. So we had to stay with Graham. I asked Graham Electric to give me prices on three 100 watt generators. He chose the cheapest of the three that he could provide. He had three different models he could provide, and he chose the cheapest of the three. And this is going to be a natural gas, as it says here? I'm sorry? Natural gas? Yes, sir. Okay. This is a two-year project. It's unusual for the state to say this is going to be the contractor you're going to use. It's not unheard of, but it was unusual to us also that they directed us to purchase from this particular vendor. I believe it was because the pricing came in within their box that they used to fit projects in and said, this fits and this is where you're going. It clearly doesn't fit cleanly within our purchasing policy, which is why we identified that in the memo. It's just not a clean fit within the purchasing policy. But if we want to accept the funds from the state of Michigan, this is how we said, this is basically what they're directing us to do to accept those funds. But they do allow us to add to the project and buy additional capacity with our own money. But they'll give us $20,700 for it. So the city, we're going to be spending an additional $20,000, is that right? $15,000. $15,000 to get this in? Correct. We always anticipated when we wrote the grant, we accepted the installation costs, which are $7,500 of that project. So the cost of going from a $45,000 to $100,000 is a different provision. It is about $7,500. The benefit to the city is we're going from a 45-watt, kilowatt generator, which would have only serviced the police department, to a 100-kilowatt generator, which will, in a case of emergency, allow emergency operations to happen throughout City Hall. It will start when this operation is up here. Correct. Is it going to be stored outside? In the fenced-in area where our heating and cooling unit is now. Okay. It actually, there's a spot for it there, and a gas line there, and a lot of it is beside the wall. Correct. And that's in a protective case? 
The standby generator? Yes. Okay. All right. That's it for me. The questions? You asked all my questions. Any other questions? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. No other questions? Can you please take the roll? Mayor Pro Tem Zaring? Yes. Councilmember Harmful? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Councilmember Whitlip? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of a riverfront lease, 556 First Street. Todd and Cynthia Lloyd have made an offer to purchase a property at 556 First Street contingent upon obtaining a riverfront lease from the city. The city has traditionally allowed a 30-foot residential riverfront lease to adjoining property owners in this area. The current riverfront leases are for a five-year period, 2013 through 2017. Staff recommends that if council were to grant a lease to Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd, that it is for a four-year period of time so that all the leases maintain the same renewal dates. The lease has been prepared by the city attorney. I do have a motion to authorize. I'll make a motion the council could take action to authorize the Marin City Clerk to execute a riverfront lease with Todd and Cynthia Lloyd upon the purchase of the property at 556 First Street. Support. The motion by Council Member Hornquist, support by Mayor Pro Tem Zaring to authorize the riverfront lease. I assume that they're fine with that change in the lease period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you. And they understand the, um, I, there was something else in here, the impact <laughs> of it on the vegetation. Yeah, I actually called Todd after the agenda request went in, and I did clarify with him, he understands that they would need the building permit, a CDC permit, soil erosion permit. He understands that staff would work with him on the placement of the stairway because it's a high vegetation area behind mm -hmm. there. The DPW and Parks would work with him to access across the river walk for his dockage. And he could not trim city trees. That okay. was made perfectly clear to him. And he needs to carry insurance. And he said that there was an area that they had looked at that had no growth in that would have minimal impact on any of the larger scenery right. trees that he was hoping to utilize that area. Okay, good. Do they have to get permission from the Corps at all to put a dock yeah. in? Like yes, so? they have to actually file no. permit with the DEQ. Of Corps of Engineers? It's concurred. Okay, okay. I have one question. The the four-year lease was to just a one-time Is it on? to put everything in uh, in order, and then all the leases will be five years? Right, okay. right. This would run with the other one, so when okay. they all come up for renewal, they all come up at the same time. So we're setting a precedent here. If one comes up and there's three years left, we'll just do a... If somebody were to look for a new lease that's half, you know, trying to keep track of all the leases, it's easier to have them all on the same side. Okay. The, the, the tracking mechanism is really the issue here, being able to track those all at the same time. So for the accounts, the option is setting the rates all at one time instead of right. setting them individually for the property mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please take the roll? Councilmember Whitliff? Uh, yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zaring? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Councilmember Harmful? Yes. And Mayor Kenny? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of City Council resolution to approve of property exemption guidelines, including federal property income standards for 2014 assessments and asset level for 2014 assessments. The adoption of the resolution of guidelines for property exemption from property tax for 2014 assessed and taxable values is required of the Manistee City Council in order for the Board of Review to grant property exemptions from property taxation. The homesteads of persons who the Board of Review determines by reason of property to be unable to contribute to the public charge is eligible for exemption in whole or in part from taxation under Public Act 390. 1994 NCL 211 11 7 u The guidelines include but are not limited to the specific income and asset levels of the claimant and all persons residing in the household. Is there a motion to approve the resolution of guidelines? I'll make a motion the council take action to approve the resolution of guidelines for poverty exemption from property tax 
for 2014 assessed in taxable value. The motion by Councilmember Hornkel, support by Councilmember Goodspeed to approve the resolution for the guidelines. Is there any discussion? Can you please take a roll? Councilmember Hornkel? Yes. Mayor Kenny? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zaring? Yes. Councilmember Whitlip? Yes. And Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Next we'll move on to consideration of Council Committee appointments. Um, tonight I'd like to go through the appointments, um, the different committees. Um, alternatives for area youth, I'd like to um, continue Mitch, City Manager Mitch's role on that um, committee. The auditing committee will be made up of myself, um, Councilmember Goodspeed and Councilmember Cody. Uh, the Local Revenue Sharing Board, uh, I'll continue my role on that. The MR MRA board, um, currently our city manager Mitch is on that board. I'd like to continue his role um, in that. The AES board, our city manager Mitch is also on that board. I'd like to continue his role there. The oil and gas investment board, um, I'll be appointing myself and Mayor Pro Tem Catherine Zaring and also Ed Bradford from the city will be on that board. <coughs> the ordinance committee, um, I have Catherine Zaring, Mark Whitliff, Whitliff and I'd like to make a change from Councilmember Hornkel to Councilmember Gudstad. Um, the Personnel Committee, this is a city manager appointment and he has indicated he'd like Councilmember Hornkel, Councilmember Gudstad and myself to remain on uh, that committee. On the Utilities Committee, um, would be Councilmember Cody, Councilmember Gudstad, and Councilmember Hornkel. And on the nine, one one board of authority, um, council member Goodspeed. Um, next we'll move on to notices, communications and announcements. Um, tonight we'll hear um, from the city manager on the year's activities. Thank you, Mayor Kenny. Um, last year, uh, council member Adams inform me that I went way too far into the time frame of the presentation. I think it was about 35 minutes, so uh, I had uh, committed to trying to do much better tonight and shorten that down. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to be here this evening uh, with Council um, and talking about uh, the past year of 2013. Uh, on your desks, you will have uh, the annual highlights. Um, there's some in the back pocket back there, if anyone would like to grab one where the agendas are at. Uh, we've been producing this, uh, I think this is our 18th or 19th year, um, I think, actually probably a little bit more than that. I think uh, City Manager Ben Bypass started this in 1988, and it has been going on since that time frame. So uh, we're happy to continue to provide this document to uh, Council as well as the citizens of Man State. Uh, and it's always nice to take a step back and looking at the previous year. Um, quickly, the Manager's Office. Um, I have been blessed to have been in Manistee for the past 12 and a half years. Um, however, my time pales in comparison to Sunny Lakovich, who has just completed her 39th year uh, with the city of Manistee. Uh, Cindy is a wealth of information. Um, I'm always absolutely amazed at her ability to find documents from the late 80s, 70s. Uh, it, it truly is amazing, and I uh, can't be understated how important that is to the organization. Um, our current fiscal year budget, I should say 13-14, my apologies, is uh, $211,000. Our primary operation is the efficient day-to-day -day operations of the city. Some of the more hands-on activities that come out of our office are council agendas all come out of our office. We do contract negotiations, citizen communications, council communication, strategic planning, and one of the primary goals that I see um, that I serve is assisting our department directors in achieving their departmental goals. I really see it as my job to assist them in reaching their goals, which are all part of the strategic plan for the city of Manistee. Uh, and uh, that's one of the more important parts of the job. Um, some of the highlights we're gonna go over tonight are the 13-14 fiscal year budget, construction projects, governance, community development, and operations. From the fiscal year budget for this year, um, we have changed the document how we've done this over the past couple of years, and I think we're doing a much better job about meeting the needs of the public 
in relationship to how we present the budget to council. Um, numerous years ago, we would, would have the very first meeting would be a public hearing of the citizens before we had presented the budget, before they had an opportunity to really review it or listen to staff's comments or actually listen to council discussion. We have changed up that process to bring citizens into the process once information is presented, then presented to them, um, and hopefully it allows them to have more of an input in the role of our budget. The budgets are always, uh, in the last couple of years, are on the city website. The draft budgets are on the website for citizen review. They're at the library, they're at City Hall, both downstairs and upstairs for any citizen who would like to come look at those. Um, this past year, we completed, uh, we started the year with the community development white paper in March of 2012. We have a budget balance, a balanced budget of $5,774,804 in the general fund. We had a slight decrease of our fund balance by $53,400. We're still right at the, I think we're at 19.5% is what our current fund balance is. Um, the policy that we've always looked at is we like to really shoot for that 20% mark of general fund fund balance. Uh, rainy day fund, it's called a lot of different things in a lot of different organizations, but it really is to uh, be able to buffer some of those time frames when more challenging issues come about. We have not changed our millage rate since 2007. And this year we had a decrease of 0.5 full-time employees from 12-13 budget, and that brings us to a total of 56.0 FTEs in the city of Manistee. A couple of charts just kind of it's easier to see the, uh, the budget from this perspective. Um, this shows you uh, the 2013 and the slight decrease um, of $54,000 basically from 12 to 13 fiscal year budget. This is as of June 30th. Um, these are our audited figures of June 30th, 2013. This one shows the number of employees. You'll, you'll recognize some of these charts from the city budget. Uh, they're similar to that. But this shows the, those um, employees. The start bill rate. I think facts are important and history is important. When we're doing budgeting, it allows us a different perspective about where we've been in the past. This shows where we topped out in our millage rate was in the 1997-1998 years at 21.94. And we've had a pretty, uh, for those those years, we had a pretty precipitous drop, and for the last um, five to six years, we've been very, very steady at the 18.45. Clearly, we'll have more conversations on that this upcoming year when we're talking about various projects. Um, this is a continues to be a disturbing trend that occurs across the state of Michigan, and the city of Manistee is not exempt for that. Uh, we're seeing a leveling off impact, and what this table is to show is the declining, the continued decline of the state equalized value and the taxable values of the city of Manistee. Taxable value is going to be your blue, state equalized value is going to be your red and this far. Um, and you can see that we're not dropping as fast as we were for several of those years. It's more of a leveling off. We hope that's occurring. Uh, we'll know more this year. Um, this table is the SEV and this table down here is the taxable value. Uh, again, you can see these negative numbers, which have impacted the city of Manistee's ability to do projects over the last several years, roughly since 2009, 2009-2010. Construction projects for this year um, that we have completed, First Street Beach Shelter, Fish Plain Station, Kosciuszko Street, Maple Street Sidewalk slash Drainage Project, Fire Station Doors, get my notes out. Fire station doors, um, team center bathroom upgrades, and concrete bleachers. So, um, this particular structure uh, was demolished in 2012. Uh, it was the First Street Beach bathhouse, which stood there, I think, in, since the 50s, is when that was basically uh, constructed, somewhere in the 50s, that time frame. And it served the city of Manistee residents and went to the First Street Beach for a lot of years. This past year, we were able to upgrade it to the new beach house. Um, clearly not even the same type of construction or design. Uh, we're very, very proud of this particular structure, the open nature of it. Uh, it was received very well this year by 
residents and visitors alike. I was uh, absolutely thrilled that the city of Manistee was able to cooperatively work with the motel across the street to slide the property a little bit to the south to protect some of their view corridors. They were happy with those decisions. Um, and it just uh, was a nice touch from the city of Manistee to make sure that we were listening to the concerns of the residents of the city of Manistee uh, on this particular project. Uh, this would be your, this is the, I think this is our, our Wi-Fi antenna um, that throws Wi-Fi from a considerable range. Uh, this will throw it almost to the stub here. Uh, and then the one from Fifth Avenue almost throws it to the stub here again. So the intent of this is to allow the greatest coverage for residents and uh, visitors to have access down there to this facility. This facility includes family changing stations, uh, restrooms. Over on this wall over here is our shower facilities. Hopefully concessions next year, that's the goal. We just didn't get there this year. Uh, all in all, uh, a great upgrade for the city of Manistee. Um, this was the original fish cleaning <coughs> station. The fish cleaning station, I believe, was built in the 1980s by the Department of Public Works employees, maybe a little bit before that, but the DPW employees built the old fish cleaning station, and it served the city of Manistee for 20 to 30 years very, very well. Uh, we were having a lot of rotting of the poles. We were having a lot of conditions on that. Uh, we were having some water issues. We all know when we were using the dumpsters what the odor complaint issues were down there in August when it was 85, 90 degrees and salmon were being brought in. Um, so we tried to address all of those issues in the new facility. Um, the new facility was a cooperative grant between the Great Lakes Fishery Trust uh, and the city of Manistee working together to do this. We have now six uh, new stainless steel tables for fish cleaning. Two of those are barrier-free compliant. Uh, we have a large cooler clean-out uh, for the large coolers that the fishermen use. There's restaurants on the back side of this. This is where the folks can hang their fish to take photographs. Uh, we wanted to really capture that, that vista of the, of the river and that beautiful um, view corridor right there when they were taking their photographs of the actual um, uh, port of Manistee. Um, we have uh, some excellent lighting in there if you were down there at all or driving by. This past summer we have numerous LED lighting which really lights up the entire facility allowing our fishermen access um, at any time of the day or night to, to clean their fish. Um, a great uh, addition to our, our port down there. This is a photograph of the dedication that we had in August of the fish cleaning station. Uh, we had representatives from the Great Lakes Fishery Trust as well as other agencies which were here helping us dedicate uh, our fish cleaning station this past year. Uh, another very, very important project this year for us was the taking advantage of the small urban dollars for the repaving of four blocks of Kosciuszko Street. Um, uh, in working with uh, Ed Bradford this morning, uh, looking up information, um, the numbers came in a little bit less than we thought they were going to come in for the total project. Came in about two hundred and six to two hundred seven thousand dollars, approximately one hundred seventy five thousand dollars from the state of Michigan Small Urban Program (MDAT), and thirty one thousand, I believe, was the number from the city of Manistee totally at the end of this particular project. Um, any of you that drove down Kosciuszko Street prior to us upgrading the street, um, you all remember what condition the road was. Uh, and this was an opportunity for us to work cooperatively with Avon Marsh and MDOT. Uh, and a lot of credit goes to Avon Marsh. So for them quickly putting together the grant application that we were able to, sure. um, that we were able to um, generate our funds from. Uh, this is a photograph of the, uh, the Maple Street drainage project going on across the street. Um, this was meant to be a test plot, if you will, for the city of Manistee slash DDA about is there a better alternative than um, brick papers. So this is a 
the, uh, the shoulder course going in on the right hand side and the actual stamping going in. Um, this also addressed a drainage issue. Um, TJ's Pub, if you, anyone's been kind of down below TJ's Pub, it used to be a different restaurant that folks would go down there. Um, it's kind of a Rathskettler kind of a uh, ambiance to it where the old coal bins is what they were down there where they used to get the coal in there. Um, they continuously had drainage, um, stormwater drainage, leakage coming into their basement, which made it really unusable. Uh, and that drainage we determined was coming off uh, the sidewalk from the city of Manistee. So we worked cooperatively with the, uh, the DDA who contributed funds, uh, Mr. Jerry Pitcher, the owner of that property. Uh, as the city of Manistee, we worked cooperatively to improve it, improve that situation and um, work hard to significantly reduce, hopefully eliminate the drainage uh, that was going into that basement. One of the issues we do have here that we are currently working on, and the timing was perfect, is we have also have noticed over the last couple of days that we have a very, very slippery situation with those colored stamp concrete pavers. Um, they were required as per the specs to put a sealant on top of those to maintain, mm -hmm. uh, maintain the color and prevent uh, cracking and such. Um, that sealant uh, was supposed to have some silica in there. We're still investigating is there silica those are not silica, but the reality is those pavers are exceedingly slippery with the snow on them. Um, we are currently working with the DPW to gonna right now is on a daily basis or as much as needed is putting sand on those individual um, uh, patches where you have to walk across on that sidewalk. Uh, we've had some folks fall. Uh, we need to prevent that to the greatest extent possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we may be putting out some signage warning folks that they're slippery. Um, there may or there may not be something we can do this winter based upon the winter, cold winter conditions. We will be addressing this uh, uh, in the springtime for sure. Um, but we wanted to, we're looking for options right now to try and uh, protect our residents as much as possible. Pedestrians, not just residents, visitors, anyone who's a pedestrian on there, we'd like to protect them as much as possible out there right now. So uh, the DPW and I have met on that. Uh, we are uh, in conversations with Avamarsh on that particular one to see what we can do. We've asked the Spicer Group to look at it, so please know we're working on it, but also uh, I'm happy that this will be on the television tonight to try and uh, warn folks to just be careful on your footing as you're going down that hill. Uh, it's already got a pretty good slope to it, so that slipperiness just makes it a little bit more challenging. Uh, the fire door is behind the, um, behind the, uh, the fire station. Um, these doors were installed to allow us to utilize that last bay for the new Braun ambulance. Uh, they're not decorative doors, they weren't put in for decorative reasons. They are functional doors to allow us to service uh, the citizens of Manistee with the new Braun ambulance um, and the ALS system that we're doing down there. Uh, Joe Helmensky, AA Helmensky, was the local contractor got this bid. Uh, Dave has informed me on multiple occasions, Chief Bachman, that he really did a wonderful job on this particular project. Uh, and it came out looking pretty darn good. Um, and this will again allow us to get our Rescue 5 and the new Braun Ambulance all inside the building. Um, and moving forward, uh, the fire station continues to make great strides in the fire department this past fiscal year. Uh, this is just kind of a quick photograph of the Teen Center bathrooms. Uh, before this, the teen center bathrooms consisted of what was called a backer board. It was kind of like a faux tile board, um, kind of like plywood with a faux tile on it. It was put in in the late 80s when the teen center was built. Um, the local revenue sharing board uh, were very, very thankful that they were able to provide funds to us that we matched from the parks department to upgrade that. Uh, we had our uh, deputy building inspector, Mark Hansen, actually did the work. so. We weren't spending money on overhead and markup. We were spending money only on uh, the, uh, the actual equipment itself. It took a little bit longer than I had hoped, honestly. Um, so we need to look at a couple ways of how we use him efficiently and if there are ways to be more efficient. This was a very eye-opening project for us. But again, uh, a nice outcome for the local revenue sharing board and the team center uh, in getting that fixed up. We have still have a lot of kids with the skate park down there that use the facility and the bathroom's really needed an upgrade, so I was happy that we could do so. 
Um, another project that Jeff and I uh, and the DPW have been talking about for a while, see, not DPW, but parks, is we have bleachers all over the city of Manistee in our fields. Uh, Duffy, um, uh, Duffy, Sands, Mac, the saw the diamonds here. We have, we have bleachers all over the place. And in the past, how we motorate the bleachers is, is we'd get a front end loader, we would move the bleachers, we would come in with our crews to mow it, and we would have the front end loader either pick it up, I think we sometimes have stood them up, or we actually physically moved them to do it. It was, it was, it was not an efficient way for us to do this. Um, uh, so we start talking about what are some different opportunities to clean up the area. Plus, I always thought it looked terrible that when you're sitting on bleachers and you had weeds poking all the way up or, or trees coming all the way up through your, your bleachers. Um, so what, we, what we've come up with is, is that um, a DPW employee, Jim Poliski, had been throughout the summer, had been forming up all of the, uh, the bleacher pads uh, and were pouring these internally. Uh, we had a budgeted amount. I don't recall exactly what that was. But we are systematically working our way through town to pour these concrete pads underneath our bleachers. A number one, I think it'll clean them up. I think it'll look much better. And I, hopefully the goal is to reduce maintenance in those areas at the same time. So a little bit of cash spent up front. Hopefully we'll have some longer term dividends to uh, our parks department who uh, very, very few employees and a lot of parks to maintain in the summertime. So if we the more efficiently can get them, the better off we are going to be as a community. Governance, heading into the governance. Um, this year we completed the Department of uh, Community Development white paper. We completed our strategic planning, which will be starting again in January for the next fiscal year. We have completed our EBIP, Economic Vitality Incentive Program, Accountability and Transparency Report as required by the state of Michigan. That ensures that we still get the reduced rate of state shared revenue. Um, the EBIP account and report are on all of our websites, and they're under the fiscal accountability icon. Uh, so all the citizens of Manistee or visitors can access all of this information about the, um, the benchmarking or the dashboard, as Governor Schneider calls it, for the city of Manistee. It's all available online for their review. Um, it, was, uh, it was my pleasure, along with Mayor Pro Tem Zaring, uh, to assist the DDA in the hiring of our new D DDA director, Mr. Patrick Kay. He started a couple of weeks ago. We look forward to working with Patrick in the upcoming year. And uh, we talked a little bit about dredging uh, earlier, about the marina dredging. This was actually the United States Army Corps of Engineer dredging, and they removed 48,000 cubic yards of material in the Manistee Harbor. Traditionally, we're only dredged every three years. For some reason, the Corps dredged us two consecutive years in a row. Um, not exactly sure why, but I wasn't going to say, don't come dredge. Um, so that dredging occurred, and uh, we worked cooperatively with the Corps. Uh, for Council Member Whitliff, who hasn't been on, we deposit the dredge spoils in the eight-foot contour, either north or south of the pierheads. In the past, we had deposited the dredge spoils on the beach itself, mm -hmm. uh, and we had some concerns being issued by property owners uh, that had that property about not wanting that dredge spoils put on the beach for as nourishment. Um, so we've been working for the last several cycles to put it in the 8 to 10 foot contour out in Lake Michigan. If you would have seen them dredging this year, you would have seen this almost like a, a fountain of dredge spoils you know, hundreds of yards from the actual uh, pyramids. That was the actual piping, the hydraulic dredging of that material. We do almost exclusive hydraulic dredging uh, with the Corps of Engineers hydraulic dredging in our channel. There is a, uh, a beautiful photograph of, the, uh, of, the, of Lake Michigan, and that is the dredge that the Corps of Engineers traditionally uses to do the dredging. Community development. I'm just happy to say that we continue to work cooperatively with the local veterans organizations for the upgrading of Memorial Park. It never ceases to amaze me their ideas and concepts on how they would like to upgrade that facility to be more of a shrine, memorial to those who have served our country. And it's, it's always a pleasure to work with the veterans groups 
uh, cooperatively with them to make those dreams come true. Uh, we are currently partnering uh, on a collaborative master plan and implementing strategies with the Lakes to Land Initiative. Uh, 17 different communities. 17 different communities are part of this. Um, this also saved us some budget funds last year in regards to updating our master plan. So there were some financial um, there were some financial benefits for us to be involved in that plan also. We had the ability to partner this year with the Manistee DDA on the development agreement of the Bluefish Kitchen and the acquisition of River Street property. Absent the city of Manistee being involved in that signature building grant application, the Bluefish Kitchen would not have happened. We needed to have that bridge grant to allow them to get their financial figures to make sense for them to open that restaurant. Uh, it was a $300,000 grant and the DDA could not apply for it. It had to be applied for by the city of Manistee um, through the state of Michigan. And, and again, it was our pleasure to work with the DDA and uh, a business from Big Rapids to relocate a new operation in the city of Manistee. We applied for the SAW grant, which we've talked about quite a bit. This is a huge grant for us if we're able to get it. Um, we've been told that there's about 750 of those that were submitted to the state of Michigan, totaling 540 million, totaling 540 million. Uh, I think they have 98 million available for the first round. So we'll see how that figures out. Um, on multiple occasions, we partner with the Vogue Theater for their successful reopening of the theater. Uh, if you haven't been down there to see it, please take the time to go inside and, and look at the Vogue. It's beautiful, the sound system is incredible. Uh, and I think it's going to be just really amazing on a nice warm summer night seeing people in downtown Manistee in the late evenings milling around, uh, going to movies and dinners downtown. Uh, really excited about that and how it's going to impact our entire community. Um, we've also updated the Street Asset Management Plan, which we presented to City Council and the community last week. Um, successful, we've also been, again this year, continued success in leveraging local funds. Um, Absent leveraging local funds, we simply could not do the projects that we have been doing over the last 10 to 12 years. It just could not work on simply city funds alone. And this year we had a very, very successful year. Um, starting at the top, we had the MEBC Signature Building Grant. That was the Bluefish Kitchen for $300,000, no local match. The Land and Water Conservation Grant, which was approved for the Barrier Free Playground, uh, the relocation of the Rocket Park Playground, Rocket Lodge, <coughs> Rotary Park Playground, $48,000 grant. We had to commit uh, $18,000 towards that. FEMA, air compressor, uh, gas filling station. This is to refill our air tanks, our SCBA bottles for our officers, firefighters. Uh, $52,500, that received a 10%, that was required to have a 10% match. Region 7, the generator, which we just talked about this evening, no match. Um, small uh, Irving Kosciuszko, 175,000. I think that was an 80 20 match. We had to put 31,000 into it. Uh, local Revenue Sharing Board Paramedic Training, 12,000. Local Revenue Sharing Board Surveillance System at Century Terrace or Harborview? Century Terrace. Century Terrace, um, $9,130. Local Revenue Sharing Board Team Center Renovations, $5,000. Local Revenue Sharing Board, Lucas CPR <coughs> Unit and Ventilator, $16,900. That was the latest one that we had received. So this particular year in the city of Manistee, we were able to uh, secure $639,500 plus funds were secured in the city in 2013. Approximately 54,700 local funds was committed to secure these grant funds. Pretty darn good return on our investment. Um, and we continue to have these kind of years, which really makes a difference. I think this is really kind of a, a really interesting and a significant number down below here. Uh, since 2000, the city has received approximately $989,000, $500 from the local revenue sharing board. We're closely, we're, we're closely reaching a million dollars received by the city of Manistee by writing individual grants like you see up there tonight uh, in doing so. Uh, Mayor Kenny currently serves on the Local Revenue Sharing Board. Uh, the City of Manistee has been represented on the board since the conception of that. Every two years we're required to put forth an application. The next application period 
will be January of 2015. This is our first of two years uh, in doing so. Prior to Mayor Kinney serving in that role, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bill Shales served in that role uh, before that. So we've only had two representatives in the city of Manistee serving on the local revenue sharing board, but we sure have reaped a significant benefit from the board. Um, funds are going down. I don't think we're going to see the amount of revenue available that we have in the past. So we need to be more uh, inventive and creative in how we write these grants. Uh, Chief Bachman has done a wonderful job um, collaborating on the vast majority of his grants, which I really think provides uh, quite an incentive to look at his as a collaboration, and we'll continue to do so to the greatest extent possible. Uh, just a quick photograph of Rotary Park. Some of the council members have seen this in the past. Uh, this is just a demo of the what it will look like down there. We definitely wanted to maintain the rocket theme. Uh, again, we're talking about relocating it. We can't maintain the barrier-free aspects with the amount of sand which is down there. At the current location, so we are talking about locating that a little bit to the north. Um, and it won't look exactly like this, but it's going to be pretty darn close. Uh, in the audience tonight is uh, Roger Zielinski. Roger and I both serve on the, on the ad hoc playground committee. Uh, our goal is to have a community build, very similar to what we did with the skate park. Councilmember gets me to remember that. We did a huge community build on that. So we're really excited about uh, getting this project off the ground and having a great community turnout and uh, you know, utilizing the greatest amount of money possible and equipment not to have someone uh, erect the structure. So I'm looking forward to that project. Uh, this is a photograph of the Lucas CPR pack. Um, uh, Chief Blackman will be able to explain it much better than me, but uh, um, this provides perfect compressions to a patient who's under a cardiac arrest uh, compared to a, a, an individual, and it never gets tired, as they tell me. Uh, so we think this will be a great addition to our, our, our uh, rescue five units. And as you know, all of our officers are quickly becoming paramedics. Uh, we have an incredibly highly skilled uh, police department and a very highly skilled uh, fire department, as well as, quite frankly, highly, highly skilled throughout the city. But our firemen are really becoming very, very skilled in life-saving efforts <coughs> as we continue to move forward. And uh, this just want to show a photograph of that particular piece of equipment that we have received. Um, this came straight out of the budget. We're not going to belabor it, but since 2002 through 2012, the city of Manistee has received $11,100,000 in grants. Um, that does not include 2013. Uh, we'll update that for the next fiscal year. Um, this really is an amazing number, I believe, for a small community. We're a community of 6,200 folks, um, and I think we do an amazing job of leveraging funds which allows us to do a lot more work than we could if we were doing it on our own. Uh, and I just think this is a really proud number that we have worked very, very diligently towards over the past 10 years. Operations. Um, this past year, we have completed uh, both the Ramsdale Theater white paper as well as the CDO white paper, which we talked about. Uh, the Finance and the Clerk's Department Office is currently working on their white paper. It will be presented early in 2014. This is our 12th year of beach sampling. I wish Councilmember Cody was here tonight. Uh, he started the program. Uh, Councilmember Cody started the program, becoming a beach buddy, not a beach bum, as they call them. If you don't do sampling, you're a beach bum. If you do do sampling, you're a beach buddy. Um, the state of Michigan samples, the state of Michigan Health Department samples, Fifth Avenue and First Street, we do man-made lake. <coughs> we had a very good year of sampling. Uh, we also this year completed our engineer of record RFQ process and have su successfully negotiated with the Spicer Group of an agreement with the city of Manistee, and uh, we are enjoying our relationship with the Spicer Group. Um, I want to take a little bit more time than normal on a particular operation, and that is transitioning from BLS to ALS. Um, the fire department this year has made great strides in that transition from BLS to ALS. Our call volumes right now are currently exceeding our estimates of what they thought they were. So correspondingly, our revenues are also exceeding budget amounts. Uh, Finance Director Ed Bradford asked me not put a number in there because 
until we get that exact number. I would appreciate you not putting a number in there. Um, we're doing significantly better than we thought we were going to do at this time of the year on our actual billing and our invoicing. Um, so very, very happy about that. And recently, council has purchased a demo of Ron Ambulance with the striker patient lift. And there is the new rig. Um, I believe you've all had an opportunity to see it. If you haven't, please let Chief Bachman know so he can get you into the rig and have you, the guys explain it to you. Uh, it's worth your time to learn about it because this is going to be a piece of equipment which is going to serve the citizens of Manistee for a long time. Looking forward towards 2014, we have the finance clerk department white paper. We need to continue our goals for strategic planning. <coughs> We need to continue our discussions with neighboring townships regarding utilities. This has to be a high priority for us. We need to begin the community discussion on street funding, Rotary Park Playground, Community Bill, personal property tax phase out. There's no question that they are phasing out personal property tax, which is going to reduce our available revenue in future years coming up. There has been no decision on how to replace that at this point in time. But we know we're going to be getting less and less revenue out of that, and we need to budget for that accordingly. Continue decline of property values, the financial impact of Obamacare loss. This past week, we found out that uh, significantly additional taxes are going to be imposed upon the city of Manistee as part of the new Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, at Bradford has calculated those to be in the tune of approximately $30,000 in additional fees associated with the new Affordable Health Care Act. This is just for one community. This is going to impact every city across the state, every business across the state, PCA, Morton, Stabile, all of those are going to have impacts about the Affordable Health Care Act. I'm not saying it's good, I'm not saying it's bad, there's probably a little bit of both inside of that but there are some financial implications to us in regards to that. And uh, lastly, we still have our utility department revenue concerns. Uh, we are working cooperatively with the Oaks recently about those particular issues, and we're still in conversations with Manistee Township and Filer Charter Township, um, Filer Charter Township on the sewer and water agreements. Uh, we had meetings today with with the AES and the county regarding Manistee Township, where we're setting up a new meeting with Manistee Township to continue our conversations with them. Um, the goal, obviously, is to walk out cooperative relationships with uh, all of those entities, including the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians, so we can all work towards economic development growth uh, as a partnership and as a community rather than as individuals. So I look forward to those upcoming challenges for next year and working with those individuals and something that's near and dear to my heart, I always like to leave with the fish, um, as I do every year. Um, uh, does anyone have any questions about? Yeah, do you have any estimates on how much we're going to lose on personal property tax? We do not know yet. Those estimates have been all over the board. I think we're probably in the thirty to 40000 range. Um, mm -hmm. But as of right now, we do not know the exact costs or how much we're going to lose in revenue based upon personal property tax. So with Obamacare and personal property, we're going to lose, you know, uh, some. There's some financial challenges. Yeah. Each year, we talk about some increase in financial challenges. You get over one hurdle, there's another, another one. one waiting for you as soon as you get over it. Any other questions? questions? Thank you very much for your time, Sharon. Thanks, Rich. I shall move on to concerns and comments. Citizens comment. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or areas of city involvement. Citizens' attendance shall be recognized by the mayor for comments, which will be limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. Is there anybody in attendance? Yes, sir. Please come forward, state your name and address. Sure. Uh, my name is Ed Sang, Sang Doc and Department, uh, Manistee. Uh, I'd like to hand you some pamphlets, and I'm also going to hand some to the city attorney and Mr. Beach and Mr. Gustin. I'll get you that right here. I'll take care of that. 
Yeah, I just. I, how much truck traffic will that uh, involve going down River Street to your? It will have, on an average, it would be five, possibly six trucks a day. Some days there might be four, some days there might be seven. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, for or against the project right now. I haven't uh, formed an opinion, but. Uh, I, just one uh, concern. We we put in over a million dollars into the peninsula yes, to sir. develop it. Uh, yes, sir. New roads, new infrastructure, new lights to try to beautify that end of the <coughs> that end of the peninsula. Yes, sir. Uh, you and know that million dollars came came hard for the city. You know we did get a grant. You, you did have a grant. You knew some of it because of the sewer water separation. Yes. Yes. And I did get to this project also, sir. Mm -hmm. I donated a 20 foot, 20 foot easement on a piece of property so the river walk could continue. Mm -hmm. I donated property to this, an easement, I guess I want to say, to consumers power so the power could all be run underground. Mm -hmm. Was the project viable? Was it in 2008? I believe it was. Mm -hmm. 
But right now, the way the economy and everything is, my property has no value. It has is non-saleable. I have spent over sixty thousand dollars having studies, things drawn. I have been to more developers and tried to push this, and I'm getting tired of getting laughed at. They said the best use of the property is you're on a deep water port, you're on a safe harbor, you're on an international waterway. Go to work and put people to work. And if the project comes, we'll be not. You have you have property to the to the south of there by the old century boat, don't you? Yes, sir. Can you utilize that for there is a possibility that material coming back in will be able to unload onto a barge with a conveyor on it to conveyor the material to the thing, but to be able to slide along the bank and load pulpwood or saw logs is not going is it can't be done. And according to the DNR, DEQ, Manistee Lake cannot be dredged from the wastewater treatment plant south because of all the winters and sediment in the lake mm -hmm. from previous past industrial use. How deep is it over by Century Boat that? Uh, I am about 12 foot, about 20 foot off. Mm -hmm. How many? You need 16 to 18 feet of water below the barge. And how many, uh, you said on an average of five trucks? Yeah. Is that, five is that every day or is that five days a week? That would be five days a week. And I know I am in the residential area. When I was doing it now, uh, no trucks before eight and nothing after four. And how about the barge traffic? The barge traffic could be one to one and a half loads every two weeks. So the bridge would be opening? The, the bridge would be opening twice a week, say on the average drill of summer. Okay. Right. What were the, um, what was that road being laid at? Was it laid for residential use? No. Or was it laid for industrial use? It was laid for commercial use. I don't, know the, I don't know the answer to that question entirely, but I will find out the answer to that question. Yeah. If there, there's interest by council, uh, I think maybe this could be part of a work session. Mm -hmm. um, if we want to pursue this, I believe this would probably have to go through. Um, there's two. There's um, And Denise, uh, thank you very much uh, Ed, for, for providing this to council and ourselves. Um, Denise also, uh, knowing that Mr. Singh is going to be here this evening, um, has, uh, has included his letter, so you've got it twice. Um, you've also had a copy of the development agreement mm -hmm. and that packet of information uh, that you have here from the City Manistee and Mr. Seng. Um, she also took some time uh, and did a really nice job to um, do kind of a, a timeline of what's occurred here for you to look at, because it's been a long time. We've been talking since 07, I believe. Um, so we've had a long conversation with Mr. Singh. So Denise put together a timeline for you, uh, as well as she put together some maps for you at the location of Mr. Singh's property using our aerial photography, um, uh, again, some more letters. And then she put the zoning ordinance in there for you also. Even though that's online, we just thought it'd be easier for you to look at the current zoning ordinance. So there's two related issues here that council would have to address in order to honor Mr. Singh's request. A number one, uh, the current zoning of that peninsula uh, does not meet current standards or shipping does not meet the current, current zoning requirements. So A number one, a, uh, a change in the zoning would have to occur. Uh, and two, you have a development agreement which prohibits this type of use from occurring at that location. So you would have to, the city of Manistee would have to address both the development agreement and the zoning issue. And um, we had a conversation with Mr. Singh last week, a couple weeks ago, probably a week, week and a half ago, where we went over all of these various uh, items with him um, and encouraged him to come before City Council tonight to to uh, present his concept. We got a grant from Cool City, Cool City grant. 
We did a, would that affect changing the zoning back? I don't believe there would be any impact upon that now. We wouldn't have gotten the, yeah. under that scenarios back then if we were doing that, but I don't think that would impact it now at all. And that would affect our agreement uh, for a to extend the river walk all the way around then too? No, sir. Well, right. How far would the river was the river walk supposed to uh, be extended? It was supposed to come. I had two pieces of water down, down there, one of San Juan and one of St. Doc. It is the northern piece that was San Juan that the city still has the easement for. And that's where the proposed marina would, uh, in that area? That the city had proposed, it was a little further to the west of that, back in the cell. Okay. It was known as a cell parking lot. Okay. <laughs> Would this go in front of the Planning Commission first to have them review and comment? There, there has to be a, have you filed your request with the Planning I Commission? I have not filed. Uh, Please, would you like to come speak to that, the process for the, the Planning Commission? Property label 51 148 700 00. Denise, could you show that? Was uh, is the one that Mr. Singh currently has sold to Consumers Energy within the last year, and that's where the that's where the 20 foot easement that Mr. Singh was referring to was located at. Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, I think um, we have a lot of information here, I think, mm -hmm. to read and go through um, that we need to, I, no, just, yeah, no decisions will be made tonight. Sure. Um, we're missing two council members, not that we could make a decision based on that, but I know I would certainly like time to read through what was presented um, and put this on a future work session. The next work session is January 14th. It's also a work session we're talking about for um, strategic planning. Not that we couldn't do both on that work session, but I wouldn't want to do anything more than right. those two particular items. Um, but that still is roughly a month out. Um, and he would also, uh, so your, your intent is to hold off on applying to the Planning Commission to get some direction from Council. Yes, sir. And, and so Council knows. Uh, if I can proceed forward, I can I can work on my contracts with Popeyes Corporation to create these jobs. As it is stands right now, I can't. If you but if I can't if I can't produce soon, the opportunity is going to leave. I mean proceeding forward would mean you're violating the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. Which I don't believe you can do, no. uh, as well as the development agreement, which which is in your purview to to revise or change. But the zoning ordinance traditionally requires two. Yeah, uh, that's some research. Traditionally, the, the zoning ordinance has mm -hmm. gone through the planning commission, and then it goes to the to the ordinance committee. Mm -hmm. The ordinance committee makes a recommendation to council, um, and it traditionally takes two readings on council. Not traditionally, is required to have two readings. In order for council to, to change an ordinance, mm -hmm. I, and I just I bring that up because it probably doesn't comply with Mr. Singh's 
Time to pray. Patience is the virtue and the virtue I have. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. no, I, I, just, I want to make sure they were clear. We understand the kind of time constraints, and we certainly will act accordingly to try and get this resolved one way or the other in the quickest time that we can. Is it is it possible I can come to the 14th work session? Oh, it's open to the public. Yep. Is it? Yes. Okay. Yep. And if you have any questions or comments, concerns about this, my name, my phone number, uh, I'm at the office. Uh, please call me. Uh, I would. I'm asking for anyone. So. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. What's your schedule of on Thursday? Pardon? What's your schedule on Thursday afternoon? Uh, I am open. All right. I'll, st I'll stop then. All right. After 2 p.m., sir? Yeah, 2 30 ish. All right. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for your time. Yes, sir. Is there any other citizen who'd like to comment? Yes, sir. Please come forward. State your name. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Solden. I'm the uh, manager at the uh, Road Commission. Just wanted to stop by. I think it's very interesting to see what's going on in the city. I've uh, been here, I guess, a little over two weeks now. And, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, working with the city. I've been going to a lot of the uh, you know, township meetings. I went to the public board meeting today. Kind of get a feel for the area. I uh, basically worked for Wade Trim in uh, Bay City, Michigan for 29 years. I was the uh, manager of the uh, Gladwell County Road Commission before coming to uh, Manistee. You know, it's a really nice part of the state. I'm originally from Hancock up in the Upper Peninsula, so it's got a lot of, a lot of similarities. And I'm, you know, looking forward to really exploring, you know, Manistee County and the city of Manistee. So I just wanted to uh, stop by and say hello and be uh, nice to uh, work for the city. So, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other citizen you'd like to comment tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to the staff, city manager. Nothing, Your Honor. City attorney. Nothing, Your Honor. Uh, safety director. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Right, Jay. Julie, you. Uh, you talked about the personal property tax exemption. I just wanted to give business owners a heads up. The exemption will begin in the 2014 tax year. Um, the State Tax Commission had a, a webcast today that was very informative, and it appears as if this is going to operate in much the same way our exemptions operate for the principal residence exemption. Business owners will be required by law to file an affidavit in order to qualify for the exemption. No ifs, ands, or buts. So, property owners that less than $80,000 in true cash value, it's called a small taxpayer law, will be receiving, as they do every year, a personal property statement after Christmas. The Equalization Department was kind enough and had enough foresight to include that affidavit with the personal property statement, but you're going to have, business owners are going to have to look for it. It will be required to be filed by February 10th, I believe the date is, and they will also have the ability, if they do not file it by that date, to file it with the March Board of Review. But if you do not file the affidavit, you will not receive the exemption. So uh, it's just a heads up to business owners. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> City engineer. Councilman mm -hmm. <coughs> Nothing, Your Honor. Just Merry Christmas, and mm -hmm. everybody have a happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and New Year. Mayor Bertram is there. Did a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Nothing, Mayor. But Merry Christmas to everyone. I will also wish everyone a Merry Christmas. I hope everyone has uh, safe travels wherever they may be going. <laughs>